Welcome to All About Money on HKIBC. I am Chloe Fong. Hong Kong's retail sector has been gaining momentum following the relaxation of social distancing measures. With more people embracing shopping again, let's not forget about the environmental impact from the items we purchase. Joining us today is Sarah Fong, the founder and CEO of the e-commerce platform The Hula, to share more about the fashion retail sector's current situation. The Hula is an online platform that sells pre-loved fashion items from top brands. It's great to have you back on the program, Sarah. Hi, thank you for having me. So firstly, can you run us through about uh, the online platforms that you have been running? So what is the Hula? What, how does the system work and what is the business model? Um, so we are actually a consignment platform. Um, we actually have um, an e-commerce site. We sell brands like Chanel, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, etc. Um, we actually also have two walk-in spaces, a boutique in Hollywood Road in Central that has um, a curated um, number of items for sale, as well as a warehouse in Wanjut Han where we actually have thousands of pieces on offer. Um, we provide the service to help sellers monetize their wardrobes, whilst we also offer items to consumers at discounted prices, some items at 95% off. Um, our consignment model actually means that we only pay for the item once the item has been sold, which actually allows us to collect such vast collections for our customers to browse. Can you also give us a brief idea of how many brands uh, that are available at your platform? Gosh, we have over 3,500 brands. Um, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, so obviously some brands we only have like one or two pieces of, but uh, we don't limit ourselves. Um, we basically see whether the, um, the item is um, resellable and whether it's on trend and whether it's good quality. Right. And speaking of the two physical spaces um, in both Wangju Hung and Hong Kong's central. Tell us yeah. more how the two physical stores can complement your online website. Yeah, I mean, it's been great for us to have the physical spaces. And um, we realized that um, when we first started that um, women prefer to shop pre-owned designer products physically. And um, since we opened the central location, we have a service called Try Before You Buy, where customers can select pieces online and then they can request to see it at one of the stores that's convenient to them. Um, we also have a click and collect service where shoppers can purchase online and then pick it up to try it on in one of the stores. Um, this makes it easier for them to return items should they need. Um, and every week we actually release, release over 150 items online, whilst in Central Store we deliver two new drops every week. So there is always something fresh and new to see. <laughs> That's great. Now we know that Hong Kong has been known as a very vibrant, you know, retail sales hub, but the sector has been severely impacted by the pandemic. Um, especially now, we just went through the city's very challenging, the fifth wave. So I wonder how has the city's fifth wave also, you know, impacted uh, your business? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's been a pretty scary few years um, and a pretty scary few months, I guess. Um, and when uh, the, the news uh, first hit of the virus, we were actually relatively small. Um, this was, you know, obviously a couple of years ago. So we only had a few members of full time staff, so it was relatively easy to navigate. Um, even though my business has been fortunate to have actually grown during these past two years, um, I think it's because our business model is somewhat recession proof. Um, we do, did have to make some really tough uh, business decisions. Um, and obviously, COVID has been extremely stressful on one hand, but we've also benefited on another hand because, um, for example, uh, commercial rents have uh, dramatically decreased. And so we were finally able to afford something in the middle of town, um, like a, a, a shop of our own. And uh, we would never have been able to do that a couple of years ago. And also another thing is that sustainability has become such a focus for people that it's actually making our business model even more relevant than before. 
Right. And also tell us about how your business having adapt, uh, you know, amid the fifth wave, were you using specific strategy to, you know, to help your business survive this difficult time? Uh, are there any innovative methods you have been using? Yeah, I mean, I do believe that businesses, especially small businesses, need to be very nimble um, and to be able to adapt with the environment around them. Um, so when COVID first hit, we actually started selling on several bigger worldwide marketplaces. So we were diversifying our audience and not just selling locally. Um, this also provided a well-needed cushion for such uncertain times um, in Hong Kong. Um, but more recently, uh, for example, for Women's International Month this March, we offered our customers uh, 30 minutes virtual styling sessions for free um, with two of our in-house stylists. This was a great way to give back to the community and to drive engagement, um, to create personalization and to get to know our customers more and hopefully to drive online sales. It might seem like a strange thing to do, but when business is, is tough, sometimes it's better to give versus going on a defense, I think. Right. Can you, um, can I understand that being as a, a founder of the e-commerce platform, you know, the e-commerce seems to be uh, less impacted by the pandemic. Is that right? Compared um, with the physical, more of other, you know, physical stores in the shopping malls. Um, you could say that, like um, I would say in 2020, our, our, our sales online definitely peaked. Um, however, uh, since we've had the central store, um, our e-commerce sales have uh, dropped slightly because people just love coming into the shop. And um, because people in Hong Kong just love to go into physical stores and shop, I think it hasn't really impacted us uh, tremendously that way. I mean, luckily, shop retail shops have still been able to remain open. So we're really thankful for that. Um, so yes, I think it hasn't impacted us in such a way, but for sure, um, an online business is something that, um, you know, has been growing of late um, for all different kind of sectors. Right. Now, we also uh, have seen the relaxation of social distancing measures uh, since last week. So I, I wonder, after the relaxation of the social distancing rules, did you see a sharp jump in terms of your business revenue, also uh, higher traffic? Um, yes, I mean, for sure, it has been so nice to have some normality back again. Um, I think Hong Kong people always bounce back. And as soon as um, restrictions ease, they're back, you know, shopping and eating and, and drinking. And, and I think people here have such a great spirit. Um, consumers, I think, have also been spending their consumption vouchers with us. Um, some of our uh, customers say that they deliberately want to support uh, smaller and local brands with their consumption voucher, which I think is a really amazing initiative. Right. Um, and also, you know, you have been living in Hong Kong for almost two decades. So you've been a resident here. Um, from your perspective, after all these kind of impacts that we have been going through, do you still believe that Hong Kong will retain its status of being a, you know, business retail hub internationally? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of fear that things will change, but I think that women in Hong Kong, I mean, they're obviously some of the stylish women in Asia. And uh, women in Hong Kong have always loved shopping. It's always been the pastime. Um, I still believe that Hong Kong is a, a relevant location for a luxury consignment business like mine, as it's a great place to collect from. Um, and um, we do have some of the best stock because of this. So once travel to Hong Kong resumes back to normal, um, I strongly believe that the retail sector will inevitably bounce back. And I'm very hopeful for that. Right. And also, you know, I, I wonder, uh, would you have any suggestions on how the government do better to provide more supportive measures for the retail sectors to recover? 
Well, I mean, ultimately, I think rental um, has always been a very big issue and hindrance for small businesses and creativity in Hong Kong. So I would love to see some more initiatives to keep the prices affordable. Um, and I think this would make a great change to, um, you know, what sort of businesses we actually see in Hong Kong thriving. Um, and it won't just be all the, the big businesses that we currently see, it'd be interesting small boutiques and and, and um, you know, businesses that you see across the world that you don't actually see in Hong Kong. And I think that's a very missing part of our culture. Right. Thank you so much for your time, Sarah. Let's take a short Thank break you. for now. Coming up next, we will talk more about the sustainable fashion business in the SAR. So do stay tuned.